And now for something completely different. Ah! Forget everything you've been told by others before. Get ready for the real deal. The full story. Real talk about money, markets, life. Now, it's The Real Investment Show. Presented by RIA Advisors. And good morning, everybody. Welcome to Financial Fitness Friday. I'm Rich Rosso, CFP, here with Danny Ratliff, CFP. So, uh, another week gone. Has it been a week already? <laughs> Don't they just fly by? Man, they certainly do. It really is something. So, it looks like we have futures down this morning. Um, Dow futures down 121 points. NASDAQ futures down. We'll see. We seem to be in nowhere land, Danny, when it comes to markets. Uh, not much conviction one direction or another. But it seems calm, right? It does seem calmer, but the VIX hasn't come down nearly as much as you would expect in this type of environment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, trading a little bit sideways. We've, we've had a handful of good days where we feel like, okay, the winds at our back for a moment. Markets have been really oversold, yet... We just can't get too much follow through. And um, I don't know when that changes. You, you would hope that we would see better earnings. Um, we've seen decent earnings, mm-hmm. I guess what we could say, but expectations have been dropped. Um, overall, I think probably the most important thing that we can gather from this earnings season is probably what forward guidance looks like. Yeah, but, right. And you have quite a few, I think 100% of... Uh, Bloomberg economists are expecting a recession next year. Uh, but yeah, we have to see. I mean, earnings guidance or forward guidance still needs to drop. And uh, we're sort of stuck in this purgatory. You know, it could be very well, even though you don't want to invest based on politics. But y- you should, you know, maybe the market's waiting to see how elections go. Because the one thing we know is if Republicans take the House and the Senate, um, either one or whatever, the gridlock. Markets the, love gridlock. Yeah, the markets will love that. You know, listen, we, for, we stop the fiscal barrage of fiscal spending and give the Fed a chance to catch up because it's almost like you've got the Fed taking, uh, un- taking dirt out of the hole on one side and the fiscal side, adding more dirt to the other. And we're never going to combat inflation this way. It's just going to make things harder for everybody. So maybe maybe that's what uh, we're waiting for here. Who knows? All I know is, like you said, the VIX hasn't really dropped off. Yields continue to go higher. Um, so it's the trading throughout the day, is it's all over the board. It's like there's no direction. It is. And interest rates, I mean, we're seeing interest rates on the 10-year at 14-year highs. I mean, this is a great opportunity, especially on the the shorter end of the curve, I think, to really take advantage of some of these higher interest rates right now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, did an interview yesterday on Fox, Rich, and it was a live one where people are, you know, rolling in questions about 401ks. What do you do? Um, You know, we're down 25%. Um, You know, I'm going to stop my contributions. We're going to get out. And, you know... That's always a tough one because everybody's in such a different cycle right now. Right. And so for a lot of people, this is something you're, you're going to be able to use to your advantage. Now, as you know, if you've listened to the show for any length of time, you know that we're not an all or nothing kind of strategy, strategy when it comes to investing. But we're, you know, we want to raise capital at different times. We want to be able to say, hey, let's continue to, to have cash on hand um, to take advantage of, of different environments. And, you know, one thing I can say is that for somebody who's much younger, and we know this, where most people are going to say buy and hold, I think cash is always going to be nice to have. But don't stop your contributions. Don't stop if you're on an automatic investment plan. I mean, no. You need to still be putting funds aside. We may change where you put them. But if if you're young and you're a long-term investor, this is certainly a great opportunity. Now, if you're closer to retirement, this is going to hit you a little bit differently. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. But you made a good point. It's even if you're younger and you're finally figuring out what your real risk tolerance is, you don't stop the contributions, but you certainly could reorganize the deck chairs, right? You can say, listen, stable value funds, most likely you have a stable value. I would think, Danny, stable value funds are probably paying 
north of 3%. Oh, they have to be. Even when yields were nothing on money markets and bank accounts, they were paying closer to 2 mm-hmm. So you've got to think they were, they're paying near 3 so, uh, if not more. Right. So there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, you know, maybe I am going to guide a little bit more to the cash portion of this, you know, tweaking it uh, if I have a longer term time horizon. If I am five to seven years from retirement, uh, if I take in a 25% hit, uh, that's a big hit. Uh, and it might cause you to change your plans. Uh, Even if you are five to seven years, I have people that I've been talking to that are telling me, listen, I'm five years from retirement. I'm down 27% this year. Uh, I'm probably going to now wait another year. Yeah. Uh, It's it works on you psychologically and working longer does add exponentially to the long-term success of your plan. But you may have had a mix of your allocation that was too aggressive. If we do get this year end, rally we're going we're starting to go into a seasonally better time of the year mm-hmm. this is going to be your chance to restructure your accounts yeah. as well and it doesn't have to be forever you're not locking anything in. that's what i hear right. often like i can't do this because we're going to lock something in well hold on we're lock. we're not physically locking something you may lock in some gains or losses which look that can be good and bad but at the end of the day You want that flexibility in this environment to be able Mm -hmm. to be nimble and say, hey, okay, we're going to make changes. And look, you're going to have some positions that maybe you're going to say, I'm holding these. I have a very strong conviction. I believe that this is going to go up, and that's okay too. But you're going to have other other others that you may want to say, hey, you know what? We're going to duck out of this. We're going to circle back at some point. Absolutely. I mean, you don't have to stay in the same allocation throughout retirement. Danny and I talk about this all the time. You're... You live and breathe. Your portfolio lives and breathes. When valuations are better and you're in the groove of your budget, you're in the groove of retirement, you know what you're spending, there's nothing wrong with taking on more risk because you'll get more reward. What you find a lot of times in buy and hold world of investing is they'll set you in a conservative allocation of, say, 20% stocks, 80% bonds, and Mm -hmm. then never shift you. You'll yeah. only be retirement 20, 30 years. You shouldn't stay in the same allocation. Well, think about somebody right now who who has not shifted at all, has raised no cash. Look, and I mean, everybody's got a problem with this at some point, but if you're in a 2080, you're down just as much as somebody who's in a 60, 40 almost. Close to it. Bonds yeah. have been beaten up so bad. No shift. <laughs> no shift. <laughs> No shift. Man, you just woke me up a little bit. I thought, I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. We're starting already. Whoop, whoop. Um, Where's the cough button? <laughs> no, um, so yesterday, uh, so Danny, I want to get into the next segment, talk to you a little about the questions you got on the 401k, because I know you did that for Fox. Um, people are, are, are starting to say, gosh, you know, I, I, this really hurts. Mm-hmm. And it does. But frankly, you know, bear markets, and I knew you and Lance talked about this, I think, on Wednesday. Bear markets don't last as long as bull markets, but they are sure painful. Hey, I got a little joke for you. Ponder this. There's more maple syrup in the waffle houses across the country than oil in the strategic reserves. <laughs> wow. I just made that up. We'll be back. Financial Fitness Friday. Stay tuned. Daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com. The end of the year is fast approaching. What will the new year bring? Join Richard Rosso, Danny Ratliff, and Lance Roberts for our year-end economic review special event Tuesday, November 15th. How to address higher taxes in the new year. Should you delay your retirement in 2023? What will the midterm elections mean for markets? Register now at realinvestmentadvice.com for our year-end economic Economic Review special event with Ratliff, Rosso, and Roberts. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Health and financial security touches everyone within your organization. 
Offering benefits for all doesn't need to be complicated. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, Senior Benefits Consultant at RIA Advisors. RIA Benefits provides independent expertise to find solutions that speak to the mission of your business, the culture you want to establish, and the budget you are able to work within. Book a free consultation with me at realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, and we'll find a solution that takes care of your most important asset your people. Realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA Advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. Get started right now at the website, realinvestmentadvice.com, or simply call our toll-free number, 855-RIA-PLAN, or again, simply online at realinvestmentadvice.com. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Bulls win in bull markets. Bears win in bear markets. Eagles soar above and take advantage of opportunity. Let us help you soar as you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors, 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. And welcome back to Financial Fitness Friday. So um, we have a new, we have another lunch and learn coming up on Thursday, November fifteenth at twelve p.m. This will be great. This is a year in economic review. What you can expect from bond and stock markets, tax-effective portfolio tips for year in planning, and how midterm elections are likely to move markets. Listen, we have to look at how politics does affect markets, and I do think that this one is going to be a big one. Um, based on the fiscal spending, it might just shift animal spirits a bit as we move into the year end if gridlock is imminent. So we'll have to wait. Well, Rich, uh, let's, let's talk see. about that a little bit, though. Yeah, so go the ahead. shift shift in, in this is actually probably a really good thing. I mean, we got put in this environment because of supply chain issues. Right. Um, monetary and fiscal policy. Mm -hmm. And really specifically... That could put a kind of curtail some of this, which is good and bad in many ways. But the economy may view this as something that slows things down enough where we're not there's not the hope of additional stimulus on the horizon. I mean, what is what do they do at this point? Right. You're mm -hmm. trying to fight this inflation. And all of a sudden, what tools are you going to use? Where's your where's your arrow? Do you have any arrows left that actually are meaningful in the sense of other than just saying, hey, we're going to cut rates. I don't think they can go out and give stimulus packages again. At least they shouldn't. No, but you never know. If we don't have gridlock, we might get another one. And this is where we have, like you said, the supply chain issue. Yep. And then we also have some demand. Uh, we have what I call revenge demand. You know, locking up the economy for so long was the absolute stupidest thing we did. And we're going to pay for it for generations. So um, people are still going to travel. They're going to get extended on credit cards. They're going to do whatever they can because you can't lock me up anymore. And you have to work both sides of this. You have to work both sides of this. And yes, we are seeing demand fall in many areas, Danny, right? And we've talked about, listen, you want to go out and buy your holiday gifts? You're going to get deals. You're going to get deals. But on the things you need every day... Mm -hmm. to live roof over your head food on your plate gas in your car many of our policies stand in the way of this uh i still don't understand the logistics of the supply chain it doesn't seem like we've done much on that side either danny so we we're not doing much to move all this stuff along and the fed keeps pounding 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 and if you look at sticky price inflation if you look at the the chained PCE, you look at all this stuff, inflation hasn't, in essence, really budged. But some of the rate hikes we're seeing now, we're not going to see the effects of those for six months to a year. Yeah. So we don't even know, as Lance says, we, we probably did go too far already, but we just don't know. It doesn't mean you won't get rallies. It doesn't mean you won't get the ability to reallocate by the end of the year. It, that doesn't mean, because I think next year is where the you-know-what the shift hits the fan, right? 
next year is where we're going to have some concerns, I think. Um, it, we'll see. I don't see how we don't. I mean, I don't either. You and I were visiting with some people recently as we were talking about, um, you know, things that were happening in the economy. And, and one of our clients made a really good point. They work at a food bank, uh, kind of volunteer on the side a couple of days a week. Mm -hmm. And they said, listen, week over week over the last month, we're seeing a 50% increase in meals that we're giving out week over week. Wow. And I'm like, well, are you talking to people? Can you, I mean, how are you, can you, can we put a, something to it? He's like, look, all I know is the number and the amount of work we're doing has doubled. You know, I used to be able to go in and, and knock this out in a couple hours where it's, you know, it's an all day event. Wow. So that is really disheartening and really kind of scary. You think about that's just one county and one small place, right? But we know that if we're feeling it here in Texas, for some reason, well, we know the reasons, but we've always been able to, to kind of, you know, curtail some of the pain here better than others. And, you know, obviously our economy is a little different than most. Um, that may not be the case anymore. Right. Right. I mean, the financial distress is real as prices stay elevated. Um, and we see double digit inflation on food prices. People are changing some of their habits. Absolutely. Um, but there's just so much you can do. Wages are not keeping up with inflation. Um, and speaking of inflation, we're going to talk about, is there a positive side to it? There is. Uh, when it comes to certain numbers and metrics, we're going to talk about that too today. But um, so Danny, on the, what, what other, any other interesting questions you got from people about their 401ks or insights that you got when you were on Fox yesterday? You know, I think the biggest thing is that, that people are concerned. They're, they don't know what to do. I mean, and a lot of you guys do, and you're thoughtful and you have a plan. Mm -hmm. Most people they don't, they don't have a plan. They don't understand what, you know, probably what the investments are in the accounts. Right. Nonetheless, have an actual financial plan to understand what they're there for, right? So one thing to keep in context and, and understand that, look, we think about the numbers and the percentage over and over, and it's really, mm -hmm. and I get it, you see your account dropping. It's a tough time, it's a tough environment. And it, there's been really no place to hide but cash. There hasn't been. So, you know, what I, what right. I think, what a couple of things that I've heard is that, you know, hey, do we need to get all the way out? And, um, you know, the problem with getting all the way out, we know this, we talk about it often, is that you don't get back in. And I think that's a big mistake. It is a bit, right. All the way out or all the way in. Um, also, you know, still have people who are thinking about, okay, I'm near retirement. I need to be more aggressive, but I don't know if I should in this environment. And you know, you and I talk about this often. People make big mistakes getting too aggressive trying to make up for lost savings that wasn't done prior. And that's what comes and bites you in the rear. So I think mm -hmm. people are stuck. They're they're trying to balance this line of of, you know, we've been able to use the markets to, to kind of make up for some of the lack of savings over time. Some people, right? I mean, a lot of people out there, and I know a lot of our listeners are really, really good at this, but some people have had to to rely on this to try to make up for it. That's just not what you can do right now. Now, if you have cash on hand, I think you're gonna you're gonna be in a great, great space. I mean, everybody waits for Black Friday to go shopping. Guess what? We're in Black Friday right now. There are opportunities. Now, does it mean it may still get cheaper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Funny thing about inflation, Rich, is that you know, we all want to sell stuff at higher prices. We just don't want to buy it at no. higher prices, right? We don't we well, when, unless it's stocks. We don't want to buy stocks on sale ever yeah. um the point is you just don't have enough pain out there yet um if yields keep going up we just got this question on our youtube channel if yields keep going up yes it's going to affect stocks adversely that's just the fact there's going to be competition for the money right i can get a two-year treasury for four percent i'm getting i'm getting you know ally just sent an email and four percent four and a half percent four and a half percent right so the only thing that you're diversifying into bonds for the, in essence are not working. You know, this storm has been somewhat unique. I haven't seen this kind of damage to a 60, 40 allocation, a 20, 80 allocation for as long as I'm doing this. And that's like 35 years. So I don't, this is really unheard of. Everything's moving in lockstep, but rates can only go so far. I don't think the bond market's going to get this right, but I think rates can only go so far just based on, What's our national, what's the interest on our national debt now per oh, year? Yeah, Over a trillion dollars? Yeah. There's only so far rates can go. They cannot go to where they were in the 70s and the 80s. The, we had a totally different economy. 
the debt to GDP ratios, household debt levels were so different. We are so over leveraged. Something is going to break way, way before that. And then the Fed will be going back to all its, its tricks, right? Quali quantitative easing and lowering rates and all of this stuff. This transitional part where the numbers got messed up after the pandemic, especially in the labor force numbers, right? We see where labor force participation rate, millions of people are just gone. Um, gone, like not, <laughs> I mean, right. they're not there. And you know what? There's still a lot of stimulus out there. People don't realize it. Our social safety nets, income tax credits, all this stuff we give away, states are now doing their own thing. Um, it, you know, employees, you see it all the time. Like you look at TikTok or you look at articles and all this stuff. And there are people out there saying, I don't want to work. I, there was, one, there was one girl, she started her job at like Equifax or something. It was her first day. And she walks in and someone at the front, like, or a few of the employees said, oh man, you're not going to like working here. And she left. She didn't even start. She goes, why? I'll listen to them and I'll just leave. I mean, you're at that point where people feel they could do that. And the only reason why they can do that is, one, they're living smaller. They're living at home, right? We have more people living under one roof than ever before uh, since World War II. And you have all these stimulus packages. And then you say to yourself, I'm not going to stick around. If, this, if these people are telling me this place stinks, I'm not even going to give it a chance. I'm going to yeah. just leave. So there's something that's preventing people from taking that next step. There's got to be some safety net out there or cash out there that is, that is preventing people from doing it. I don't know how long that's going to last, Danny. I, you know, and that means the Fed's got to keep pressing, pre-pressing, keep pressing. But it is already damaging. Um, and how many over leveraged companies do we have out there as well as we're over leveraged on the government side, on the fiscal side, how over leveraged are some corporations that have been walking around and have been able to refinance with cheap debt. And now they're going to refinance and look in their with look what their rates are now. Oh yeah. We're about to find out. And, and what happens to stock buybacks? You know, we, we haven't uh -huh. gone down that path where people, these companies have been able to issue debt just to turn around and buy stock. I don't know if you still see that. That doesn't mm -hmm. look the same. The numbers won't work at some point. Right. Um, it's just stubborn. It's just stubborn. And if you're going to see, if you're going to have to see unemployment go to six, six and a half percent per, say, Larry Summers. They want it like four and a half. I mean, <laughs> that's what the long term projections over the next couple of years, four, four and a half. Right. So this inflation is going to stick around for a while. And again, we're going to get back. We're going to talk about, well, where is inflation going to help you? believe it or not, when you return. investment advice blog it's required reading for the informed investor catch it today at realinvestmentadvice.com the end of the year is fast approaching what will the new year bring join richard rosso danny ratliff and lance roberts for our year-end economic review special event tuesday november 15th how to address higher taxes in the new year should you delay your retirement in 2023 what will the midterm elections mean for markets register now at realinvestmentadvice.com for our year-end economic review special event with Ratliff, Rosso, and Roberts. RealInvestmentAdvice.com Health and financial security touches everyone within your organization. Offering benefits for all doesn't need to be complicated. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, Senior Benefits Consultant at RIA Advisors. RIA Benefits provides independent expertise to find solutions that speak to the mission of your business, the culture you want to establish, and the budget you are able to work within. Book a free consultation with me at realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, and we'll find a solution that takes care of your most important asset, your people. realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, realinvestmentadvice.com. 
And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. A passive investment portfolio requires active risk management. It's not a choice, it's necessity. Diversification doesn't protect against risk of loss. Let us actively help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors. 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. Can't catch the whole show now? Listen to our podcast later at realinvestmentadvice.com. We're looking for our next house eventually, right? We're driving and my wife's scrolling on her phone and she goes, well, there's an open house over here in this neighborhood. So she's like, okay, turn here. And so I turn on this street and she's like okay well turn here and i'm like babe where's this house at you're looking at the open house on your phone that's just well, i don't have my glasses i can't see my phone the real investment show podcast i had spent like 20 minutes driving around with a blind person giving me directions at realinvestmentadvice.com my life is a soap opera anyone can sell you insurance and they'll gladly take your premium dollars the RIA Insurance Agency can provide you with insurance solutions tailor-made for your needs and lifestyle. Because everyone's assets are different, let RIA Insurance review what you need to protect and how. We won't sell you insurance, but what you need will be a matter of policy. RIA Insurance Agency. 888-915-0780. 888-915-0780. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Click on the insurance tab. Real Investment Show podcasts are now available from Stitcher Smart Radio at Stitcher.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA Advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. It's a quick and easy application. Just simply click Ask a Question at realinvestmentadvice.com or give us a call at 855-RIA-PLAN. That's realinvestmentadvice.com. The end of the year is fast approaching. What will the new year bring? Join Richard Rosso, Danny Ratliff, and Lance Roberts for our year-end economic review special event. Tuesday, November 15th. Register now at realinvestmentadvice.com. Realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. So when does inflation actually work for you? When you got a balloon store? Your plane's going down and you got to blow into the little hole to keep the vest on. <laughs> if you're on Social Security, right? We're going to see cost of living adjustments, Danny, next year raised by 8.5%. That's another decent year of cost of living adjustments. And we know the Part B base premium is going to be $164.90. And that's a decrease of $5. Yeah, yeah, but but wait, that's not still a, it's a decrease in light of go, raising it 14% the year prior on something that it, they're not even using. What are right? you trying to say? Yeah, it's, it's fuzzy math. Yeah, very fuzzy. But at least you know that you're going to get a decent uh, cost of living adjustment. Also, um, we had a Social Security uh, lunch and learn yesterday, and I was telling everybody the cost of living adjustment everybody knows about. But inside your Social Security formula, the bend points that create the primary insurance amount, you get a Social Security uh, um, waging, you get average wages that are going up, and it does increase those bend points. Uh, so if you're under 62 years old, for example, uh, you're, those benefits are going to keep up with the rise in wages, and that's going to be roughly maybe 9%. So inside the sandwich of social security you're going to get more meat if you haven't taken the benefit if you're under 62 and but we also know now that the maximum amount of wages subject to social security taxes danny we know that's going up nine percent right so it was one hundred and forty seven thousand dollars on your cap it's now going to be one hundred and sixty thousand two hundred. and i am actually shocked we still have a cap I, I am too i'm shocked that they raised it to be honest with you because we've seen wage growth growth in growth, I can't even talk. Uh, we've seen that increase a bit, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't have thought that they would have raised that as well because it's counterintuitive to what they're trying to do if they want to raise taxes. 
why would they mm -hmm. they give you well I, I guess not counterintuitive in that aspect so more money is going to be taxed on that aspect but right um i mean again the with the way social security is and again we we believe it'll be here you should be looking at possibly removing that correct that 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 ceiling also the internal revenue service had adjusted key ta uh, key tax code parameters for 2023 so they're raising the standard deduction and income thresholds where taxes take effect so the 37 percent top marginal rate are going to is going to apply to individual income above five seven five hundred seventy eight thousand one twenty five married couples six hundred and ninety three thousand seven fifty so those thresholds are going up seven percent and you're going to have the standard deduction that's going to climb to twenty seven thousand seven hundred for married couples so you're going to see some of that um, overall maximum contributions to healthcare spending account will climb to three thousand fifty from twenty two thousand eight fifty. So a couple of good things within this. I mm -hmm. mean, you're going to be able to standard deductions going up. That's increasing. So, yep. Yep. Um, you know, a lot of people aren't itemizing anymore because it, it increased so much. I mean, practically doubled um, with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. So now that increase is good versus, you know, hey, they're going to tax a little bit more if you're a high income earner, which we've always anticipated that was going to happen. I'm, you know, like you said, you're shocked that that's actually still there. They're going to have to remove that cap at some point. They are. And it's ridiculous. This deduction of capital losses against ordinary income is still $3,000. Yeah. <laughs> Why you, you aren't you, you inflation over. adjusting that number? Why is it $3,000? Yeah, in essence, it probably should be closer to $25,000. Yeah. So... So that's where we're going to see some changes because of inflation, but it'll expand some of the brackets across the board and income you make. Uh, so it'll keep you within a, in a marginal rate that maybe you weren't going to be before because of inflation. But on the other side, obviously, <laughs> some things will cancel out. Yes, it's great. The standard deduction is going to go higher. Uh, they're keeping tax credits the same. Thank goodness they're not bolstering those because we don't need to do that right now. So... Um, so that's where inflation is going to hit you. So you got to look at your taxes a little differently next year. If you're in uh, on Social Security, you're going to be happy with that. But I would say if you're years away from Social Security with the average wage base going up inside the formula, uh, gosh, pull your statement January, February. You'd probably be surprised to see what your benefit's going to be. Yeah, You know what? An interesting point in, in regard to that, Rich, is that we had somebody recently ask this. Look, I'm like 68 years old. Mm -hmm. um, should I go ahead and take it? Because I'm going to miss out on this COLA if I don't. So they wanted to go ahead and take it. Instead, they thought that, okay, I'm not, I'll, I'll forego the 8% to get the cost of living adjustment. And that's not how it works. Right. You get both. You get both. You get so both. delaying it works in your favor. It, absolutely. Absolutely. We talked about yesterday how Social Security is longevity risk insurance. It's not like, oh, I got to break even because I put everything into the system and I got to get it out. It's really designed to help you make it through if you're going to live longer, especially we're going to talk about in the next segment. Um, well, maybe we'll talk about this segment, but how Goldman Sachs, new study, people age 42 to 76. Um, <laughs> obviously, they're not saving enough for retirement, but more than half of the workers aren't saving enough for retirement. Right. Um, that's Goldman's revisiting how investment managers are going to help people raise savings and, and confidence. Right. This is all coming. This is all funny. This all this kind of stuff comes up when there's a bear crisis, cycle yeah. or corrective in market. Right. When everything's rosy, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, don't worry about it. You're going to be fine. Your plan works. Until it doesn't. But if everything's rosy and we still have this problem, I mean, think about the environment we've been in for the last decade. I mean, yeah, we've had hiccups here and there, but nothing significant that should completely derail somebody. And the study showed that most people are going, or half the people are going to retire, and they're going to have half of what their paycheck was when they were working. Half. So how do you pay your bills if you weren't saving money already? What are you doing? Oh, you're going to downsize? Nope, not in this environment. I'm going to go on the dad plan. Die yeah, at but, desk. <laughs> well, but these people thought they were going to work. Yeah. So this is among working baby boomers from 1946 to 64. 53% said they haven't saved enough for retirement. 
still just 30% of those 53% were pessimistic about their financial future. And again, part of that is recency bias. As when markets are doing what they're doing and the economy feels uncertain, you just don't feel good about anything. So even if you are doing a good job, you're still feeling like you're not doing a good job, right? But obviously we know there is a fallback to savings. Uh, Only 11% of working boomers and 12% of Gen Xers were very confident they'll meet their retirement goals. This is going to be a challenge for financial advisors who believe stocks are the answer to every, it's the solution to every problem. It'll dig you out of, they'll dig you out of every hole and they're the best thing since sliced bread. When we know, Danny, it's so multi-dynamic, there's so much more that goes into this process. Well, and, and that's right. I think they, they're going to be great again, right? And we're going to have some, I'm optimistic. I think we're finding companies that actually make sense fundamentally. We're not quite ready to maybe go, go over a ledge for them. But the problem is, is that that's what most people are going to say. In, in every environment, it's the end all be all, right? Those are the same guys that are fully invested right now. Mm-hmm. So you've got to say that. No, I agree. Now, here's the interesting part of this. Uh, obviously, they have time on their side. So 37% of millennials, 27% of Gen Z said their surveyed said they're behind schedule. Uh, but they were very confident. Um, it's funny with Gen Z because my daughter's Gen Z. And I see there's no middle ground with Gen Z. There are this Gen Z that there are the quiet quitters. They, they do whatever they can to, to get by. They don't save any money. And then you got the ones that are totally living smaller, socking away every penny, uh, working hard. I, I, it's, I, it's a very extreme Z. Oh, that could be a new Marvel movie. The extreme Z. You know what I mean? Danny, it's really odd. And this is anecdotal, but I Funny see where this. Rich's brain goes. <laughs> You know, millennials, it's like a shade. You go from like, it's like a color shade, right? It's like you graduate, you know, but it, Gen Z, there's like this hard black and white of big savers, living smaller, adverse to stocks, maybe white insurance better. And then the other group that are on Tic Tac showing their butt every day. I, it's, it's strange. It's just I don't know. I I don't know what your kids, what kind of just generation that's going to look like. Um, so that's going to be. That's I don't be know. A, All three of mine are so different. <laughs> I'm like man. So while fifty one percent of retiree surveys said they live on they live on less than half of their pre retirement annual income now twenty nine percent reported that they do they that they may do with even less than forty percent of primary income. So. So all the advisors are saying, what, what do we have to do, Danny? Uh, save more. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, with this inflation, mm-hmm. these, these interest rates. Yeah. And, they want, and you want to look at maybe, repla- and this is, again, this is a rule of thumb, but replacing 70% of your working income, um, I could argue that I've seen people do it with 50% of their working income. Well, or that, less. That's a really good point. Let's talk about that on the other side of the okay. break, because I think that's something that we could shine some light on. All right. When we get back here on Financial Fitness Friday, stay tuned. Investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com. The end of the year is fast approaching. What will the new year bring? Join Richard Rosso, Danny Ratliff, and Lance Roberts for our year end economic review special event Tuesday, November 15th. How to address higher taxes in the new year? Should you delay your retirement in 2023? What will the midterm elections mean for markets? Register now at realinvestmentadvice.com for our year end economic 
Economic Review special event with Ratliff, Rosso, and Roberts. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. Get started right now at the website, realinvestmentadvice.com, or simply call our toll-free number, 855-RIA-PLAN at realinvestmentadvice.com. Health and financial security touches everyone within your organization. Offering benefits for all doesn't need to be complicated. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, Senior Benefits Consultant at RIA Advisors. RIA Benefits provides independent expertise to find solutions that speak to the mission of your business, the culture you want to establish, and the budget you are able to work within. Book a free consultation with me at realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, and we'll find a solution that takes care of your most important asset, your people. realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, realinvestmentadvice.com. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Manage risk and volatility rather than trying to manage gains. You don't have to be right all the time. Long-term investing success is a 70% gain. Let us help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors. 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. And welcome back uh, for our last segment. I think this Goldman study um, is really telling people or advisors to be more holistic, which could be painful. Especially if, you, if you've never been, right? Yeah, I mean, maybe we got to think outside the box here. What if these lower returns that we're seeing or this turbulence is more longer term than we think? Be because more realistic, valuate, but sell our products. <laughs> <laughs> Be realistic, but sell. I mean, valuations are down, obviously, yeah. Danny, when you look at the Cape, but not down where they need to be. There's still not a lot of work. So this was a study of 599 retirees um, uh, that really were very um, instrumental in providing some of this. But what, what you wanted to talk a little about what we were discussing in the last segment. What were we discussing? <laughs> <laughs> well, because less savings, you know, look. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. 56% had to leave the workforce earlier with less savings than they planned recreating to. Recreating paychecks. Right. Yeah, and so, you know, we often hear okay, I make $100,000 and mm -hmm. I'm going to need $100,000 to live on. But I think the problem that most people don't realize is that you may make $100,000, but what do you actually bring home? Exactly. And what do you actually spend? Because now we're backing out, you know, you were paying for your health care, you were paying for, which may still be the same cost, depending on how old you are, if you're on Medicare or you're not, could be actually higher if you're pre-65. But we're talking about, okay, you're funding your 401k. You have an employer stock option plan. I mean, you, know, you may or may not have these, but you get the idea. Um, you're saving money each month. You're paying off your mortgage or other debt that now is paid off, hopefully, when you're stepping into retirement. So often we find, like you mentioned, maybe it isn't 70% that you're actually, maybe it's closer to 50% of what you're actually making that you're living on. And if you're a saver, you're not really going to be saving anymore. Yeah. All that money you're putting away into 401k, you say you're putting away 20% of your income or whatever it is, you're a good saver. Well, it's good to have those habits, but you're now in distribution mode. Now, here's really what's important. The retirees that were interviewed said, obviously, inflation was the number one issue. Health costs, makes sense. Social security reductions, but, and running out of money. Yeah. Generating retirement income was a top challenge. And here's a pretty much, this is pretty much really interesting. 76% of the retirees surveyed said they want at least half their income to come from guaranteed sources, primarily Social Security. Yet only 55% said they achieved that now. You're going to find, we say this all the time, cash flow is the lifeblood of retirement. Yeah, you want growth. You need growth over time, but cash flow 
I need money coming into this household, right? I'm not a human capital earnings machine anymore. So guaranteed income, I think, Danny, as it is a top challenge, is going to be even more important if, say, for example, the markets are going to give us disappointing returns over the next decade. Absolutely. So you have to understand, you know, what's coming in, but also what's going out and where it's going. And that's the problem that I think that most people don't want to tackle. It's almost like, I want to say, um, you know, doing a will, Mm -hmm. dealing with our mortality. People feel the same way about doing a budget as they do with that, understanding the cash flow, understanding where funds are going, understanding the hierarchy of savings and even paying debt off for that matter. Throughout, yes, throughout this study, what really rose to the top was retirement income uncertainty. So some went for, to work part-time. Uh, one quarter uh, more retirees this year went to work part-time. And I, I do think there's some value, if they're healthy enough, there's not only just the cash flow coming in that reduces what you need to take out of, say, savings account, or retirement accounts, uh, investment accounts. It's that staying active, social, keeping your mind working. You know, people that we have, we have clients who are working, they don't need to work. They want to, to get out there and have a purpose. And, uh, and, they, and they work in jobs that they're finding fun. I have clients that work at Bucky's. I have clients that work um, at Petco. I, I mean, they're, they're doing things that they consider fun. I have oh, one yeah. client that became like a, car, a part-time carpenter for like the Children's Museum okay. and doing stuff. It's, you know. You have a client I talked to the other day. She's doing uh, HEB curbside service. Really? She's like, you know, I meet so many people <laughs> and I'm walking 10 to 15 miles a day. I was like, that is awesome. Right, so she's getting her exercise in, yeah. right? Yep. And she's meeting all these people. And it's and not talk- because she has to. Right, right. So there is something to that. I, I don't know about you, Danny, but I, I don't just think I could sit at home and no, not do I anything. Would. I, it, well, it, I would wilt away. I'd be one of those studies, like the, the statistics that show that men that retire early dying. take Social Security at 62. <laughs> like, you know, I would have to be, number one, I think I could find plenty of things to do. Uh-huh. But if I sat around, it would be, it'd be done. Yep. So, so inflation was the top concern, right? Income that is inflation protected ranked fifth out of eighth in terms of the most important retirement income feature, right? Preserving savings and inflation adjustment. And this is where everybody's going to come in and go, stocks, stocks, stocks. Well, stocks are not guaranteed. David Blanchett came up with a great study. I think he's now working at, uh, uh, I think he might be at Morningstar now. Or so, I can't remember where he is now. He was at Morningstar. He Star. was at Morningstar. He's, he's left. left. But David Blanchett had done some great studies. Listen, if people do, who, retirees who get checks every month, per se, guaranteed income, spend more. And they don't have the same level of stress. Why? If I know I'm getting $5,000 a month and I spend it all, I know I'm getting $5,000 again next month. Right? We're already talking about how the 4% portfolio withdrawal rate, a new study that came out, and I wrote a piece about it that's on REA right now and Real Investment Advice, is 2.6%. When I'm in retirement, I don't need someone to tell me, wait a minute, you told me this 4% was absolute, like, godlike. You, you, no matter what, now you're telling me 2.6%? That's not guaranteed. That's a substantial change. <laughs> That's right. So what about all the people that retired on this before there's any more thought put into this? Because forever, the 4% rule has been the rule of thumb. Yep. I mean, I'm not talking about it a couple years. It's decades. Decades. Yeah. Decades. And we always say there are going to be times and market cycles. We just went through one since 2010 where stocks had this incredible tailwind and the guaranteed income, if you had two runners and you have your stock runner and your guaranteed income runner. Your stock runner was the star. And you didn't think much about the guaranteed income runner. Now, things are going to start to switch. Well, that possibly. guaranteed income is, is just smooth and steady, and right? And just keeps smooth and steady. Whereas right. the stock is going to be, it's going to run in, in fits and spells, right? It's going to haul tail. Well, maybe one's gonna, a sprinter, right? One's yeah. a jogger kind and then of it's thing? Gonna, and then it's going to get winded. Yep. And it's going to pull back and then it's going to you know, kick butt again. And then, you know, kind of back and forth, back and forth. Get second win. Okay, here we go. Now, what if I need a decade for that wind? 
and I'm in Ooh. retirement. That guaranteed income and making those right decisions with guaranteed income is even more important. You know it? what's interesting? Nobody talks about that. What? And well, oh yeah. What happens if it if it takes a decade? Because it never takes a decade. Oh, but no, it does. No. The the interesting part, the people that are still talking about it, are they're they're much older, right? They don't have the voice anymore because the people that are still talking about that. Remember it. They were retiring pre two thousand and living off of those of their earnings. From 2010, or 2000, 2010, we called it the lost decade. It actually took you longer than that to recover. So if you were a distributor during that time frame, you were in trouble. But most of you guys who are listening right now use this to your advantage because you are still investing. You are funding that 401k on a regular basis, putting funds aside. So Rich, that's, that's kind of an interesting concept, though. I mean, you brought that up. Most people don't think about that. Yeah, and Pat, uh, one of our clients, sent me his, his stable value. His stable value fund's not even earning 2%. That's really? pretty shocking. Something's not right there. Um, thanks for sharing that, Pat. So that's an insight because I have some stable value funds that are doing north of 25 to 3% because they should be investing a little. Hmm, that's very confusing. But thanks again, Pat, for sharing that. So you got to really dig into what your cash equivalent is paying. You might even have like an ultra short duration bond fund, all of these are still going to be a challenge. Uh, heck, the money market might be paying well as well. You want to check these kinds of things out. Listen, if you're a saver, cash is not trash right now. No. We've seen utility stocks get taken on the chin, and there are a lot of utility companies I really like, and they're, some of them have been paying dividends substantially for like 50 to 70 years. They just can't compete with the yields on bonds. But I think by the end of next year, that's a different story, Danny, because at the end of next year, the Fed's probably going to have to reverse a lot of what they're doing right now. That's just my best guess based on where the economy is going right now. Well, I saw something earlier said that there's a 42% probability of the Fed funds rate being between five and five and a quarter next year mm -hmm. based on where interest rates are today, meaning interest rates have already sh overshot what the original expectations were, at least what they were even two months ago right. of being at 4.4, then it was 4.7. So we, we have way overshot this in the short term. We have, and I don't know how we're going to handle rates in that level. We're already seeing mortgage rates uh, close Seven. to 7%. And Lawrence Yoon over at uh, National Association of Realtors saying housing is already in recession. Listen, there's going to be a lot more pain to come. But along the way, even though it doesn't seem like it, you do get bounces in markets, uh, reflexive bounces, and you possibly could be in for one through the end of the year. But don't take your eye off the ball because this damage isn't done yet. Guaranteed oh. income for retirees is something that we look at. You know, where that income is going to come from, it's very, very important. Hey, thanks again for sticking with us this week. Next week, we're going to have some 10 steps, 10 years to retirement. Some idea of what you should do. Again, have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks for sticking with us. Financial Fitness Friday. We love you. Bye.